Morning, everybody. It is day five. Yes, it's day five out here. Um, today's dozer day, but the dozer's not here quite yet. And we did a late start too, it's 8.30. Come on, where's the dozer? Anyway, uh, we started this morning and I pulled in here. Rick's not here yet. So I'm out here by myself getting all my shit ready and all of a sudden there was a uh, big tom turkey back that way. It scared the shit out of me because I thought I was totally out here by myself and all of a sudden it sounds like Jurassic Park, but whatever. Um, anyway. So I'm gonna start this morning. Um, back over there, we've got that pile. I'm gonna pull out of the woods with the hoe. I'm sure that wind noise is great, isn't it? I'm sorry. Um, I'm gonna pull that forward so we can get behind it with the dozer. I may pull some of that berm forward so that we can get at it with the dozer. And hopefully by the time that's all done, the dozer will actually be here and I'll flip over to the dozer. So that being said, I know it's breezy. It's probably going to sound like crap. Yep, it's probably going to sound like crap. So I'm going to shut this off and I'll catch you guys in the machine where it's not breezy. See ya. Well, everybody, I didn't turn the camera on right away because uh, it's cold. I didn't bring my winter coat because it's supposed to get to a decent temperature today. But I was cold. And so I kept the cab shut while it warmed up. So now that the uh, the cab is warm, I have the window open, which means my cameras are in position to record. Which, by the way, uh, all of the work I've done this week, instead of going in the bank, bought me this nice new shiny phone. That's exciting. So, pretty thrilled about that whole experience. But at least we can get drone footage now, right? Totally worth a thousand dollars. Which, by the way, I'm gonna sound like an old man. I'm just gonna have an old man moment. You pay $1,000 for a smartphone. They only give you the charging cable now. They don't even give you the charging block anymore. Like, what the f guys? It costs you 30 cents to make one of those charging blocks, but you're gonna... Oh, and, and that's the best part is the phone store, they want 30 freaking dollars for a charging block. I can buy a pack of four of those on Amazon for like 16 bucks. Give me a break. Anyway, there's my old man rant. Oh, anyway, so we're bailing dirt back here. I'm just chucking it out here in the middle because, you know, why not? I'm going to have to put it out there anyway, whether it's with this or the dozer. And I ain't got a dozer, so you might as well toss it. very mellow operating just bailing material especially this stuff this is like soft topsoil it's really easy digging look at that look at that heap bucket baby I love material that heaps up in the bucket it makes me feel like a real man No guarantees, no promises, who knows what's going to happen, but the guy that we are doing this job for wants Rick to put a bid in on a pond, and it's going to be, we went and walked it yesterday and started doing some initial estimating so he could bid it, and it's looking like it's going to be about 12,000 yards of material we got to move. So there is a chance here in the next month and a half or so that we could potentially get a pond job. So we might we might just turn this channel into Let's Dig 2. Let's Dig also. We'll just rename the channel. Because we're doing forest stuff and now we're doing pond work, so. But that's actually pretty exciting. We'll, uh, we're probably gonna rent like a Cat 336 size machine, a D6T dozer, and then we'll have an off-road haul truck. And, uh, and that will be a solid probably two weeks of digging and hauling and shaping. Like that could be a seriously fun project. So I'll try to keep you posted on that. By the way, 
way, I meant to give you guys a quick update on the Brahmas. So we've had some unfortunate developments here in the land of Brahmas. Um, so these things are, what did I say, I've been on job sites now for probably three, we three weeks worth of actual working conditions and you can see the sole right here is already starting to get a little gnarly, which by itself would be okay whatever, except for the fact that this is three weeks in. What are these gonna look like in you know another month? Um, so there's that issue. The furry stuff, which it's not really, I don't care as far as a look standpoint. I'm more concerned about the wear, but the kind of furry stuff on the side here is starting to rub off. Again, only three weeks. And then the laces up here have already started to uh, have some, some uh, what am I trying to, what am I trying to say here? Where they start un, they, they've got some nicks in them. I'm just gonna say that because I can't think of my, my words this morning but they've already got some cuts and abrasions on them. So it wouldn't surprise me if in another month, as I'm lacing my boots up, one of them decides to pop free on me. So, you know, I don't want to totally poo-poo them yet, but it does not bode well for the Brahmas when, you know, and at the same time, I'm an operator. It's not like I'm out there laboring this whole time and and I've really been putting them through their paces that's that's the part that's worrisome to me is like relatively speaking I've been pretty easy on these boots so maybe hold on to your money Brahma fans it might be worth saving up for some decent work boots intentionally wearing these just so you guys know I have my I have my nice uh, red wings at home but I have intentionally been wearing the Brahmas for our grand experiment here and I would like to give a shout out to one of my uh, hardcore avid followers Gene uh, You've got a solid two weeks of excavator videos, brother. I know you've been wanting excavator videos, and uh, I delivered for you. But starting this afternoon, or later this morning, I should say, we're gonna get back in a dozer. And I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry, because I've been in this excavator on this job for too long, doing BS bullshit. And uh, I'm ready to get in a dozer and start hogging and shaping. Because that's really satisfying at the end of something like this where you started out with a rough lot and then you get in that dozer and by the end of the day it looks nice and flat and level. And
shuts just a hair. It's got that real like bassy bam, 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 bam. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I don't even know if you know what I'm talking about. I might just sound crazy, but it's irritating when machines do that. <clears throat> So as, as much as I know you guys love watching me just sit here and, and play in the dirt, uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to shut her down because I know outside of Gene, there are people that like watching me run dozer. And I'm going to save some footage for that. So without further ado, I'm shutting off the camera, guys, and we'll catch you in a bit when the dozer shows up. excavator but we're gonna see if we can get it to work with the dozer so bear with me while I fly my drone you know what this isn't gonna work yep not gonna work I'm sorry guys because I'd have to switch video modes and then nothing would be synchronized but I will try to reposition you to a better angle maybe without crashing into trees. Let's see if we can do that. That's always best practice. Okay, there's our new angle. And we're just gonna have to be happy with that, ladies and gentlemen. All right, here we go. Which, by the way, you're gonna notice um, my pedal is no longer a deceleration pedal like a traditional dozer. It is actually controlling the track speed and the transmission. 
And the reason I've done that is in applications like this where you're hogging a bunch of material. Ooh, there's a big old stump. Um, when you're hogging a bunch of material like this, if I had the decelerator depressed, I would be on the front side of the power curve of the engine. And so as soon as I hit a pile and it gets tough, or I hit some hard clay, which I'm doing all over the place out here, you have this like couple seconds where the engine has to kind of rev up and get its power and then you start pushing. Versus in this mode, as soon as I, because the engine's already at full throttle, um, like right now is a prime example, you see there's not really any hesitation. I mean, we just start taking off and start pushing. Now, your knee-jerk response is to think that you're wasting a bunch of fuel because you're running at full throttle. The reality is all these new modern machines have an ECU module that's controlling fuel to the engine, and it's only using the amount of fuel necessary to keep it at full throttle under whatever load it's under. So if there's not really much of a load, it's not just dumping fuel into the engine, and it's not burning fuel like crazy like you would think. And so you really get the advantage of being right in the power curve at any given moment when you put it in this mode. Now, tomorrow when I go back to doing fine grading, most likely I will put it back into decel mode just so I don't have to listen to the engine scream all day. But but today I've been hogging so much dirt. This is a, this is a much more efficient method for me. The other thing I've adjusted, ooh, there's that, oh, oh. Um, the other thing I've adjusted on this machine, and, and you've heard me talk about it before, good operators don't just get in a machine and, and take for granted they've got the best settings and everything's the way it needs to be. Um, this thing, you can, can you can set the sensitivity on the hydraulics, cat and deer I know have the same setting, I'm fairly confident Komatsu does as well. But I actually went in and put this into fine mode smooth I think is what they call it and this thing just grades like a dream I really I know I, I say it I will continue to say it I love case dozers they push I mean you can, you can see we're not getting any track spin right now even though I'm really bogging the machine um, but the finesse of the blade you know this is this is the equivalent to a d6k that I'm running right now it's an 1150 and you know, D6Ks are notorious for having that super jumpy blade. It's really hard to fine grade with it unless you've just got a tremendous number of hours and seat time on that specific machine. Versus these case, uh, these case dozers are just so easy to grade with. They're super, super nice, smooth controls.
but from everything else, from a balance and power and, and ease of grading, these are just phenomenal dozers.
the time lapse of the trees just so you can enjoy the beautiful scenery that my camera or I should say the gimbal thought that you should be able to enjoy so in fact I'll tell you what we're gonna do at the end of this pass I'm gonna flip you over to that stunning time lapse of the trees and then I'm actually gonna go fix it and I'm gonna switch you over to the time lapse of the actual job that I'm doing right now. So we'll get to the end of this pass and uh, I'll send you off. in a day five that was a long day of pushing dirt but we pushed a lot of dirt so uh yeah i'm gonna have to well we can we can do a quick ground shot because at least at least from the ground you can see how level we've gotten so compared to what we started with i would say we've made a fair amount of progress on the lot um Basically, I've been focusing on really kind of finding where the grade's gonna be. And uh, so it's been a lot of hogging because as you guys may remember, this morning we had a huge pile there. Uh, this back corner was just a giant disaster with a big pile. So really the primary concern today was getting material out of the way so we could kind of establish roughly where our grade's gonna be. And part of the reason I've kind of been back and forth across the site is we wanted to scratch down to where our grade was gonna be so that we knew whether or not we were gonna uncap some of the stuff we had buried because like I mentioned before, our excavator is out of here on Monday. So we have to get down to grade and make sure we don't have to bury anything else before Monday. So. All that to say, we've got some low spots in here. You know, this is very rough graded. Um, I am gonna have to come back and, and actually get some, I'm gonna try to fluff some good material up and use that to kind of finish grade because uh, you know, there's so much garbage in here. Like this is a prime example of what I'm dealing with. You know, we've just got stuff that's causing the, uh, the grade to drop and poopy and all sorts of stuff. And it's just because there's so much garbage and trash in here. So. I'm gonna try to save some of that soft material back up that way to kind of just um, dust everything off with towards the end. But you can see I've got a couple more stumps that have popped up as I've dressed up this corner back here. Um, and I'll kind of pull back so you guys can see what I got going on here. Um, I'm gonna try not to whip you around, but 
This backside, that's as clean as I'm gonna make it. I'm really not concerned about dressing this up and making it fancy. It's a, a lot for parking trucks on. So basically you can see the high point right in front of my car there. Everything kind of drains down through this little swale to the back. Um, that's going to allow this kind of whole quadrant here of, of the pad to drain back to where we're standing and off this back edge. And then we're gonna have, basically what I'm shooting for is a high point out there in the middle so everything else will fall off the back edge and the back edge. So yeah, getting there slowly but surely. I did come and make a final pass on this. And again, this is as good as it's gonna get because it's a truck lot. I'm not gonna really polish this, but we did do a, a last pass to kind of shape this bank a little bit. Um, and it's a rough shape, you know. I'm really not shooting for a, uh, a pretty finish on this because as I mentioned earlier in the week, I'm over it. This job is uh, starting to beat the piss out of me, running over all this stuff, having to bury it, dig borrow, borrow pits and just all of it. I'm totally over it. So anyway, uh, I'm going to have my son with me tomorrow running the dozer. So I'll get some drone shots and some, I'll try to do some cool shots tomorrow since I've got a little little more of a lax day. I'll try to glue the, the camera to the outside of the dozer and do some more stuff like that. So all that being said, we're gonna call it for today. So you guys, tradition, right? Gotta do the drone shot now that I have a phone. Um, I'll send you guys out with the drone shot. So you guys enjoy that. Have a lovely evening. We'll catch you tomorrow.